presents to 92. 92. Yeah, shout out, bitch. <laughs> 92, bro. Yeah. Prison show 92, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, Pro Prison Show 92. Got a very special guest for part one interview coming up soon. All right, y'all, stay tuned. What's up? What's up? Pro Prison Show 92. Boom! Hit that like button and subscribe, baby. This video is going to be all about Road Crew. You know what I'm saying? Crew 5 in the building. Shout out Crew 5. I'm going to tell you all what that means. Road Crew. You got to have 18 months or less on your prison sentence to even apply to do Road Crew. If you got prior escape charges, you probably can't do Road Crew. Now, I was able to do Road Crew. I ain't got no escape charges. I had about 18 months. Well, I had less than 18 months by the time I'm finally made it to pre-release for some weird reason anyway when I made it there um, I didn't have a job a lot of people in there got a job there's about 250 people in pre-release most pre-releases don't hold more than like 500 people man it's not a huge prison most of them are dorm style prisons you have like dorm 1 dorm 2 and dorm 3 in my pre-release each dorm has about I want to say about 60 70 bunks Maybe more than that. Maybe about 80 bunks. We'll go with 80 bunks each dorm. Um, and there's people from all over. People done 30 years. They done done life and got their time back. They done only got 18 months. They got a year and a day. Whatever it may be. Short timers, long timers. It's all a mix. We had the three dorms. We had a cafeteria. And we had a rec room. Two pool tables. A microwave, another microwave on the other side. We had two TVs in each corner, and then we had doors in the middle of the TVs that let you out to the rec yard, which was a long track and field with weights in the middle of it. A bunch of free weights, not really any machines, but we had bench press, uh, benches, things like that. Now, I finally got put on road crew. I had to write the case manager, tell her how much time I had left, Tell her I wanted to do road crew. Tell her I blah, 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 all this good stuff she wanted to hear. So I got put on crew five. I was assigned to crew five. Now, crew five, what that is, you go out to PG County. Each crew is a different county. Crew one is St. Mary's. Um, crew, crew, crew one and crew two actually sometimes is St. Mary's, but normally crew one. Crew two is like a floater crew. Crew three is Calvert County. Crew four is Charles County. And then crew five is um Prince George's County, PG County, right by DC. It's literally some parts you'll be right in DC, like across DC in the line, you know. Um and we stop there. But we do go out and venture out where yeah, it gets wild, man, in some parts of the city of DC. So I'm on crew five. I wanted to be on crew one um because I wanted to do St. Mary's, which is where I'm from. And when you see people <laughs> Where you're from, you know, it's cool to see people. Oh, I ain't seen you in years. There goes Jay. He's on road crew. Now, they throw a lot of cigarettes out the window. No matter what county you're in. They're going, oh, those are prisoners? Yeah, throw the jacks out. And we pick them up. We bring them back. But not to cut to the end of the story, on road crew in the wintertime, they give you these big-ass yellow junk suits. I mean, them joints, like, you put your feet in them, and you zip them all the way up to your chin, pretty much. Big yellow reflective jump suits in the winter. In the summertime, you just wear a plain white tee, blue DOC shorts, I meant pants, or you wear, you might be able to sneak out pants with pockets in them like I used to do, and you wear boots. You always got the five-star boots on. They're called five-star. They always give you a pair of boots for road crew. Excuse me. Anyway, so look out for them guys if you ever see that, and it's probably a white van with a DOC sticker on there, a Maryland State sticker on there with a little uh, light on top, you know, kind of police-looking emergency light on top of the van. And then a state highway truck will follow the van sometimes or go ahead of the van. One of the two. They might be out there somewhere. You might have a litter pickup sign put up in the area they're working. So just to let you know, them dudes want jacks. Throw cigarettes out like a mug. If you got cigarettes, throw them out. We call them jacks in my area. Anyway, so we go out to PG, man. It's my first day out. And uh, it's snowing outside when I first started. I'm like, damn. This is treacherous, kind of. We walk about 8 to 10 miles a day, literally. We take lunch from 12 to 1 o'clock. 
come back from lunch and then do about an hour, hour and a half of work. And then we roll out, roll out around 2.30, sometimes stay till 3, normally about 2.30, get back in time, wash up, you know, make make uh, dinner, things like that, you know. Um, but yeah, man, so it's snowing outside. I'm on the crew with Day Day. I'm on the crew with, uh, let me think, Day Day was my boy, man. Shout out to you if you're listening from Baltimore City. And Metro, Metro was on there. And then we had some other guys with us. I think Face, he was a Hispanic. They call him Face because one eye was like closed shut. He got stabbed in his eye when he did a robbery. That's why he went to prison. So shout out to you, Face. He's from Mo County, Montgomery County. Anyway, Metro's walking down the highway and he keeps doing like this. Doing like, and I'm like, what the hell is this fool doing? Why is he doing this? What's wrong with Metro, man? I might need to beat Metro because he's acting crazy and stuff. So I'm like, Day Day, why is Metro doing this? Why does he keep trying to walk ahead of us? I walk fast as hell. So this man must be going out his way to try to stay in front of me. Why does he keep doing that? And nah, Jay, nah, nah, he's trying to jug. I'm like, oh, he's trying to jug? Jug for what? Jug means you're trying to cop something. Drugs, guns, money, whatever. you just jugging. Might hit a lick. But anyway, he's jugging for jacks, for cigarettes. I wasn't hip yet. I was green, you know. I, I was... Uh, new to the pre-release, the road crew thing. So I found out, I'm like, man, ain't nobody gonna throw him no cigarettes. He looked like a crackhead walking down the street doing that. But lo and behold, he's sitting on the back of the van on the bumper. The police in the van. We're having hot tea to warm ourselves up, taking a five-minute break. Because you take a break, legs start hurting. He's doing this on the back of the van, man. Somebody drives by, beep, beep, throw the cigarettes out. Whew, boom, hits the ground and slide. He hurries up, runs back about five steps, picks it up, put it in his bag. Cop looks back, don't see nothing, we're drinking our tea. He got a whole pack of Jacks, puts it in his glove. Waits till the end of the day, we get a few more cigarettes, and then we got the boofers, man. The boofers, every crew needs a boofer. Now, if you got a boofer on your crew, you're good to go. If you don't, you ain't bringing nothing back. Boofer, long story short, he takes a glove, he takes lube, whatever, however he does it, he puts the cigarettes in there. Or, or a sandwich bag, actually, that we get we get lunch bags. So they take the bread out the sandwich bag, use sandwich bag, put the cigarettes in there, tie it up in a knot, and shove it up the butt. That's how we get it back. And when we get them joints back, no lie, them dudes, I'm waiting. I'm waiting at my bunk, like, that day. I'm like, man, where's Metro at? He's trying to rip me off, man. He better pay me my half, blah, 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 because we all supposed to get a cut because we all in it together, you feel me? Like, three of us on the crew. There's about six of us, but only three of us jug. Three of them don't want to jug. They want to go home. They don't want to break no laws. So whatever, that's on them. They ain't getting nothing. Now, he finally comes out the restroom. He's like, yeah, man, it takes time, blah, blah. But I'm like all antsy because I don't trust people too much. You know, and I want my cut shit like five cigarettes. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to sell them $3 a piece. That's $15. I wasn't even smoking back then hardly. So anyway, finally comes out, man. He gives me three, I mean, uh, five cigarettes wrapped up in toilet paper and they're clean. It ain't no shit toilet paper. Whole cigarettes. You know what I'm saying? I put them in a little baggie, go around different dorms and sell them that day. Bam. I got my $15 worth of food. Now this is new, a new adrenaline rush for me. I'm hooked. I'm like, man, I'm a jug. Every time I go out there tomorrow, day day, when we go out there, we're going to have to jug even harder. We need more. We need more. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting hooked on doing this stuff, man, for real. So, um, anyway, back to road crew. That's pretty much what we do all day long. We jug for jacks. Some people like, uh, and you switch crews too. Some people might be sick. Some people might not go out that day. They might've hurt their leg and they might put you on a different crew or they might just switch you up to switch you up. Cause it's like a security risk. You know, if they keep you on the same crew, um, you know, every day, what if you plan to escape or plan this or plan to hurt the CO and well, now you're switched and you have no way to tell the person on the outside you're not going to PG, you're going to St. Mary's County this day, you know. So they do that. They mess around with you. But anyway, so I go on a new crew. It's like crew four. And um, we go out, uh, where do we go? We go out Prince Frederick County, you know, I mean, uh, Calvert County, Prince Frederick, Maryland. And, and we cop and bop out there, do the same thing, man. We got Billy out there, rest in peace, Big Bill. He passed away from Calvert County, uh, I think. The year before last, it was the first year he got out of prison. He overdosed and died, man. That's really sad. So anyway, rest in peace to you, bruh. But he used to bring back lighters, cigarettes. I mean, one day, Big Bill, he was treacherous. He stuffed two old packs of Newports up his butthole and a Bic lighter. Not a mini lighter, a Bic lighter, big lighter. Man brought it all back, cut it right in half. Cut the boys off. Here you go, here you go, here you go. All good. Yes, sir. Bam. Making moves. That's what road crew's about. 
you take your lunch. We go to a park when we take our lunch. Normally, it's a park in the area that we've been picking up trash at, so we go to the closest park. We see things at the park, man. You know, the girls might be doing yoga and the guys are looking at them because they ain't seen girls in so damn long. Me, I did three years, so it wasn't like, you know, I just did 25 years. Some guys are weird. They'll be staring at them literally like it's a animal in the wild, like eating a tiger. They'll just... And, you know, the CO will even say, like, hey, you got to slow down on that, man. You're, like, scaring people away. They're going to think you're, like, a child molester or a rapist or something, you know. Because them dudes, man, they ain't seen action in so long. They are on it. I mean, hey, that girl's way over there doing yoga. I swear she is. She's five miles down the street. But I can see her leg in there. You know what I'm saying? They're they're that on it. And then dude disappears in the bathroom. You you know what's going on, man. I hate to say it, but, yeah, that dude's in there rubbing one out. So, it's wild, man, seeing how men react from road crew, you know, from not being out for so long. You're basically like there when everybody gets released from prison for the first time, even if they've been in for 20, 30 years. You know, they're not released, but they're out there on road crew doing their thing. You feel me? We're jugging. We're doing this. We're smoking cigarettes on lunch break. We eat our food. We might hit a jack. Some people smoke a lot. Some people don't. I hit it a few times. You know what I'm saying? The cops always in the van, probably about a half a mile down the street from us. They can always see us if they really look, but we hide. We do our thing, man. We're convicts. Come on, you know. So eventually, like, I'm getting warmed up to this road crew thing. Me and my boy Wayne, we end up coming out our way, St. Mary's County. Wayne is from St. Mary's County as well. He's locked back up now, free Wayne. Anyway, um, JR is what they call him. We was out St. Mary's one day, and we're picking up trash way down by the beach. I mean, we're on the water picking up trash. So we got a cool uh, CO. I'm going to just call her Miss V. That really is her name. I'm not going to say her whole name. She's cool as shit, fat white lady, whatever. She let us uh, chill on lunch break, do whatever. She just said, as long as you're back at this van in an hour, I don't care what you do. That's what she used to tell us. Not every CO is like that. Miss V is. Me and Wayne like, hey, bro, we need to find a cell phone. I ain't had no girl at this time. Wayne did, though. Wayne got to call his girl. So, man, Wayne walked all the way down the end of the beach with me. We see these two Mexicans fishing. Hey, tambale, blah, blah, blah. You know, they talk. I'm like, hey, bro, cell phone, cell phone. Can we use phone, phone? I asked him, you know what I'm saying? He's like, man, you're white. You asked him, blah, blah. So I asked him, whatever. I get the phone. Wayne calls his girl. She answers, hello, who's this? Man, baby, baby, bring, bring, bring something, man. Bring some, bring some tree, bring cigarettes, bring whatever, blah, 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 whatever you got. I'm waiting on somebody to bring the tree now. So she bull crap and talking about she waiting on getting tree and this and that ain't got it. Man, they finally hit the dude's phone back. We're just standing by and water fishing, waiting on call. We ain't got no other resort. You know what I'm saying? Nothing else to do. So anyway, she finally calls back, say she's about to be there, blah, 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 blah. Miss V is beeping the horn, meaning we got to go. So I'm like, shit, I got to distract her, bruh. So I tell Miss V, man, my stomach hurts. She was like, why'd you use the bathroom at first? I said, man, my stomach hurts. I got to go. So I go to the bathroom, hold her up. Wayne walks around the other side of the park where the entrance is. His girl comes in there, and I guess he meets her. He gets the K from her. He gets the cigarettes from her, you know. She didn't have no tree or nothing. Probably, thank God, because you would have pissed dirty for it anyway if we did smoke it. Or he would have. I wouldn't have been dumb enough to smoke that because they pissed at you twice a month. If not, at least once a month in pre-release, too. That's another thing. But at the time, they can't detect K2. I don't know if they can nail, but they couldn't. So anyway, he gets like some K2. I think he had some pills like gabapentin or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And he got some cigarettes, pack of cigarettes, fresh pack. So we did good that day. You know what I'm saying? Used a little phone trick, called her up, blah, blah, blah. So it's just because we are both in our county at the same time. And that's what made the magic happen, man, when you're in your area. So it is cool being in your area. You know what I'm saying? Went back, he broke me off. We're both sitting like kings in the jail. That's another thing. When you bring Jack's back, you got an old pack. You got some pills. What? Ten dollars, twenty dollars a piece. Ain't even gotta be narcotics. Something that messes you up, man. Hell yeah. So doing good on road crew, man. I like road crew. My next step is to go to an outside job, McDonald's or Burger King. They got contracts with them. They got contracts with St. Mary's Land, and it's a restaurant. And then they got contracts with McDonald's. And then they got contracts with Charles County Public Works, meaning like cutting down trees, things like that. I ain't want to do that hard-ass labor. I want to do like McDonald's, Burger King, so I can get out and see people do stuff. To say the least, I never got to do that because I wrote the case manager over and over. She did not care about her job. Um, she didn't care so much that one day this dude Tay said, man, F this. I'm tired of not having a job. He was a big, tall black dude. He started a riot, basically, as in A. Nobody go to breakfast, nobody go to lunch, nobody go to dinner. Let's show these fools we're not playing. Now, this happened towards the end of my sentence, about two months to go. 
Nobody went to lunch. Nobody went to breakfast. Nobody went to dinner. Cops are looking around. They're getting scared. Even the cafeteria lady said, uh-uh, not this again. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. She was so shook. She left work early. No lie. Because she seen, uh, before I got there, a riot had erupted. And all the inmates were fighting. There was a guy fresh from Calvert that was uh, one gang. And, and he was fighting against the other gang, Murder Inc. dudes. And they were deep as hell in there. Like I said, them DCPG dudes are real deep in the pre-release. So they beat the hell out of him, cut half his ear off, hit him with pool balls. They even knocked the old CO out. Uh, CO named uh, Long, I believe. Old white dude, white hair. Oh, he stands all stiff like farmer guy. But they knocked him out, man. Socked him on accident. Didn't even hit him on purpose. So it was wild. And like 40 people got sent up out of there because of that. Fresh ended up making it home somehow. I don't know, but he's out now, I believe. Anyway, um... So they didn't want the same thing to happen. So they called the uh, warden down there that same day. He comes down the same day. First time he's ever come down there. And he, he lines us up in the dorm. Every inmate that's got a problem come to the dorm, blah, blah. So we all go. Yeah, yeah, we ain't got a job. I've been working road crew over like months and months now. Still ain't went to McDonald's. I, da, da, da. I ain't getting no requests back when I write my request for him. Everybody speaks up, man. Dude promises all these jobs. I'm going to give you a job, and I'm going to give you a job, and I'm going to give you a job, and damn it, I'm going to even give you and you and you a job. Everybody's all of a sudden got jobs now. That's what we think. He leaves out. We, find, we you know, program is normal now. Next day comes. We're all right in the case managers thinking we're getting jobs. Finally, she does approve my request to get work release approved. Not road crew, but work release. She approves it and everything. I'm good to go. All I got to do is do my interview at McDonald's now, and I got a job. Guess what? I got less than a month to go and I find out you can't get a job if you got less than 30 days to go because they're not going to let you work there for only three weeks and then you quit because you're out of prison now. They don't want temp uh, workers, you know. that That's a breach of their contract with McDonald's and the restaurant and things like that, I assume. So anyway, I couldn't do it. I was pissed. But I just rode it out on road crew, man, for the rest of my stay in there. But a lot of other guys did get jobs because of it. So it did work, to say the least. And we didn't even have to do it in a violent way. We just made a stand saying, hey, look, it shows them what it showed them is all the convicts are organized. And we are all programming the same way. We don't like how this is being ran. So we're not going to breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're going to keep making all this food and it's going to go to waste over and over and over. No, eventually it's not just going to be food. We're going to riot and tear some stuff up, set some stuff on fire. But we don't want to take it that far. You don't want us to take it that far. You see that we all have control. We're all on the same page. We're all doing the same thing. Not one soul walked in that dining hall. So you see we're all capable of doing the same thing. And this is a hundred some people, you know what I'm saying? They know the power. Power is in numbers, baby. So guess what? They gave in and did it. Just like in California when they have them hung hunger strikes and they don't eat for like a month or whatever it may be. They only eat commissary, this and that. You know, they get on the news because of stuff like that. So it does work. That's pretty much what we did was, hey, we're not going. We're not even walking step foot in that cafeteria. I don't care if you got chicken. I don't care if you got KFC. I don't care if you got that new Popeye's sandwich. We ain't going in that cafeteria. <laughs> that simple. Ah, thirsty. Anyway, um, so yeah, I rode it out on road crew. Even my last day there, man, or the day before last, technically, I did go out on road crew. I jugged and everything, man. Actually, I almost got locked up on my my second to last day there. I was out PG County, and I got a cigarette right in front of the cop, the CO Green. That He was my CO for the longest time. He was crew five driver, the CO, so he knew me. I knew him. I didn't think, thought we had a mutual respect, didn't think he would mess with me like that because i always be like man green back up off me dog leave me alone like let me do my thing day leave me alone man i'm not in the mood and i tell him he's like all right man but i'm telling you man i'm telling you you're gonna lose that date you're gonna lose your date meaning i'm gonna lose my release date I'm like dog leave me alone like i used to talk to him like just a punk like man leave me alone you know i work because i do work my ass off pick up a lot of trash i don't leave trash behind because when you do that makes us look bad and the driver has to go all the way back and make sure we do it and all this bs i'm not one of them lazy fools so he don't get on me too much that's why i said like a mutual respect i don't talk to him i don't tell him anything of course not but it's a mutual respect if you get what i'm saying so anyway i picked up a jack somebody threw out in pg county i felt like man this went out of man went out of his way to throw a cigarette to me i'm gonna pick it up so i pick it up and he caught me he's like man what you got in your hand and i said nothing i'm holding the trash bag i dropped the jack under the trash bag on the ground 
And he's like, man, I seen it. I seen you pick it up, blah, blah. Now, the cigarette rolled under the van, but I had matches, too, and they dropped on the ground. And he's like, so what's that on the ground then? I said, what? He's like, that. I said, uh, matches? Why? And he's like, yeah, okay, man, I'm telling you, you get caught again, you're losing your date. We're going to lock you up, send you to the uh, blue room. I'm like, damn, man, come on, green dog. I'm about to go home. Like, why are you even worried about what I'm doing, dog? Stay up off me, you feel me? But that just shows how close I was to losing my parole date, and then I would have been locked up and had to do a whole nother year of prison time all over one cigarette. But that's the type of mindset you got when you're in the system. Even if you're two days away from going home, you're still in the system. You're still a convict. You still got to abide by the rules and the code. And I, myself, am a jugging convict. I jug. That's what Jay does. Like, I'm getting that money, baby. I'm hustling in that joint. So I'm not going to stop just because I'm about to go home in two days. No, because I'm still waking up in prison. I'm still eating prison food. I still got prison clothes on. It's still prisoners all around me. So hell yeah, I got a name to uphold and I got a life to live and that's my lifestyle while I'm in prison. Now when I get out, it'll be a different ball game and I will use all that energy for positive because I know I can't risk coming back. But while I'm in there, I'm living it like a convict. I know that somewhat makes sense, but somewhat doesn't. You just got to be in there to know what I'm talking about. But when you're around all that influence and all them convicts and all this and that, yes, you can do good. And I did do good, but at the same time, I broke laws and I jugged. And that's just who I was. So, yeah, I kept doing what I was going to do, man. It is what it is. You know, it's not that nobody made me. I just like doing that. You know, that's that was my routine on Road Crew. I'm not going to walk past a pack of cigarettes because I'm about to go home in three days and say, oh, I'll throw them away. That's twenty dollars in my eyes, baby. More than that, you know what I'm saying? Sixty dollars. You sell them, sell them all at once. About twenty, twenty-five. You sell them one by one. You get sixty dollars, three dollars a piece. Twenty times three ain't hard to add up. So yeah, not walking past that, man. Um. Anyway, pre-release for me was pretty much a breeze. It's when I decided I wanted to start working out. They had a bunch of free weights. Not a lot of people worked out in there. They were relaxing, getting ready to go home. Had three years, two years, a year left, couple months, whatever. Me, I liked working out in there, and that's when I started jogging and jogging and jogging and jogging. Man, I jogged miles and miles every morning. Then I would hit the weights in the uh, afternoon and at night yard, you know. And then I would shower and I would just rest, go to sleep, do it all again. I would even stay from road crew some days and, and work out because I wanted to get my workout in. But, um, so it was a cool jail overall is what I'm saying. They did have weights. You, and that's why I worked out too in um, pre-release because you got so many yards, three different yards. So you got a lot of yard time. When you're in regular prison, minimum, maximum, you only got like one yard a day, maybe two, something like that. But pre-release, like three to four. So I was getting it in, hitting weights, having a good time. They used to have snack machines, vending machines. You used to be able to keep $85 at all times on you, up to 85 um, you couldn't do any of that now. They didn't have snack machines. You weren't able to fish in the pond like people used to be able to do. You weren't able to work on tractors and ride around by yourself like people used to be able to do. Go to the liquor store, get a bottle, and get drunk like I heard about, and then come back. Can't do all that. You know, there was still no fence around the pre-release, but they still kept tabs on you. When you're out on work release, though, if you're working at McDonald's, they drop you off and leave and come back eight hours later, so you can kind of do whatever you want, you know, as long as you ain't got a shitty manager. But... It's a lot of freedom, and I recommend it, man. If you get time, look forward to pre-release, you know what I'm saying, and try to make it there. Like I said, I jugged, but I still made it to pre-release. I got in fights in prison, but I still made it to pre-release. It don't make me any less of a man or, or say anything about me except for I worked my ass off to get there, you feel me? I kept writing and writing them motherfuckers. You got to keep writing them. And I started out and, and max and then max and then medium and then uh, medium minimum and then pre-release, you know what I'm saying? And, and I've been through all them prisons. But I made it there, and I enjoyed it when I got there. So I'm just telling you all about that, and road crew's pretty cool. You know, it's not too bad unless you don't like walking, and yeah, you're probably not going to like it. But even the big dudes out there like road crew, you know what I'm saying? You see all the people riding by, messing with you, yelling out the window, just chilling, man. It's pretty cool, you know. So much love, Parole Prison Show 92. I'm going to end it on that note. Got much more videos coming, more content coming, man. And uh, click like and subscribe for me, please, man, for real. If you support my channel, click like and subscribe. If you are not subscribed, you shouldn't even be watching my videos. I don't know why, because you ain't showing no love to me. So I would never show you love in the street if you ain't subscribed to my channel. I'm not asking for anything but just clicking a button, man. Come on, subscribe for more videos. I love y'all that do subscribe. Y'all are my A1 day ones, my dogs, my parolees, my homies. 
Simple as that. My brothers, you know what I'm saying? My family. So I love y'all. Hold down the compound. Jay's got to go to work. So peace out. Until next time.